going to do today is like in today's lecture, maybe it might be obvious for most of them, but at least for me, when I was seeing it for the first time, it was not obvious. So for the people who are seeing it for the first time, feel free to stop me anytime and we, we can discuss, we can repeat things all over. So during the whole lecture, I will consider dynamics on the torus, T2. All the properties that I'm going to list, they hold for any, if you replace this by any sum of manifold, but just for the lecture, I will keep it for the torus. And I have B is a Borel sigma algebra. And mu is a volume, which is Lebesgue. I will be given a smooth map acting on T2. And that F is, mu is F invariant. Okay, first of all, I would like to discuss the relationship between ergodicity and some other properties like transitivity. And to do that, I, 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 I will tell you like how I think about ergodicity, like the intuition I have for ergodicity. So, so you have seen the definition of ergodicity saying that for every A in so, ergodicity. For every A, so F minus one of A equals A implies the measure of A equals zero or one. So this is the definition of ergodicity. So the way I like to think about it, which is a good intuition for what is coming next, is that if you think of your space where the dynamics is acting on, ergodicity is kind of related to what some people might call irreducibility of the system. Like, if you have two sets, if you can reduce your system into two sets, A and B, where A is F invariant and B also is F invariant, one of these decomposition like, is not meaningful in a measure theoretic sense. Like the measure doesn't see one of the set. So, so in general, if this is possible, you can think of your dynamics having like a decomposition, like a reduction. You can have, you can say your F1 is acting from A to A, and F2 is acting from B to B. You have a reduction. Ergodicity is telling you that if this happens, you can ignore one of the dynamics. Like the measure doesn't see what is happening in F2, for instance, or in F1. So that's the intuition. So ergodicity really, for me, it means like, whenever you have a decomposition, the maps will take points here, map them there, like it will mix the two sets by the action of the dynamics. That's how I see uh, like ergodicity. So this is closely related to, you can think of it as having a relation with the notion of transitivity. Transitivity, as you define it, having a dense orbit. Now I will give another definition, an alternative de definition, which you will see is closely related to this. So I should finish what I was saying here for people who are taking note. So, mu f mu ergodic should imply that mu of a equals zero or mu of b equals zero. Like the system doesn't see one of the dynamics. You can just think of your dynamics as being one. You cannot reduce your dynamics. Definition, this is the definition of transitivity. So f is said to be transitive If for every u v open subsets of T two, 
By the way, am I writing big enough? Okay. Yes, thank you. Non empty open subsets. There exists an such that f minus n of u intersect v is not empty. So you can see that it's saying even more that like whenever you have two open subset, you have one which is going to intersect the other one after some iterates. So there is this first exercise that we will probably discuss in the afternoon. So ergodicity with respect to volume implies transitivity. Now to do this exercise, I will just uh, like give you a hint to recall what you have done last week in an exercise by Hannah that you have seen that recall. I've got to see the imply that for any A, B measurable, at this. So you have seen this, I mean, you can see easily like how this property follows, the property of transitivity followed from this implication of ergodicity. So one other question that one might ask is, like, are they equivalent? Like, is topologically transitive, is transitivity equivalent to ergodicity? And the answer is not. The answer is no. So in general, transitivity, does not imply ergodicity. And there is an example. Which is due to Furstenberg. So it's this example is on the torus. We have f from t2 to t2, which is defined by f of theta 1 theta 2 equals theta 1 plus alpha, theta 2 plus psi of theta 2. So, I mean, I'm not going to discuss the exact condition on theta and alpha, but if you, if you are interested in it, you can just type on Google the Furstenberg example. There are conditions that alpha should not be Jaffantine and irrational, and there's a condition, there's a choice on the map so that F is there is a choice of alpha and C such that F is transitive but not ergodic. Always respect to volume. So now, for the next, I want to, I want to, so there's another characterization of ergodicity also that I want to talk about, which is, yeah, like, if you have, sorry. 
Yeah. Oh. So this is the definition of transitivity. Okay. Yeah. Implies, yes, yes. Okay. Is that going to be an exercise? Yes, I'm thinking of writing that as an exercise later, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So there is this other. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now there is this other characterization of ergodicity. As a remark. So you use this two fact continuous function are dense in L2 plus the fact that the projection map, if you remember, you have the conditional expectation. Just recall, BF is a, is a subset of the sigma algebra that are F invariant is continuous. You use these two facts to prove that ergodicity is equivalent to the fact that for everything in the, for every continuous function, on the torus, have to a constant function. Yeah, this follows from uh, from these two facts. You can use the continuity to, to, to deduce that. Already from the book of ergodic theorem, you, you have it for L2, but using the denseness, you can have this way and the other way also. So the rest of the course, I just want to discuss examples. Yes, 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 this is convert. Yes, 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 yes. Yesterday, Hannah said. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's a that's a that's a very important point because here this convergence is almost everywhere. But one might think that it depends on the function. But it doesn't. You can, have a sub, uh, you can have a full measure set for which every function you take, in the, you take a point in that full measure set, you have convergence here. So let me write that maybe more clear. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So there exists a set, how do I call it? So A0 with full measure is that for every continuous function we have that This is for every x in A, in A0. Like this convergence is almost everywhere, but for every function, for every continuous function. Thank you. Yes. Implies? Yeah, OK.
Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you don't take the. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. It's positive to measure. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's also another property that you, you prove from ergodicity that which which is more than this because this you have open sets. You can take two positive measure sets and f inverse of one intersect the other, f minus n for some n that has positive measure. That also follows from ergodicity. Yeah. Ah, so it was, it was the, so you know what BF is. So the conditional expectation was defined to be that the integral of E B F B prime where B prime is in BF. Yes. BF Is a, is, are the elements in the sigma algebra such that f minus one of b yeah problem so for the rest I will discuss examples and our famous our favorite example is the two and one map to prove ergodicity Later on in the course, you will see a more general proof that works for general system, not only for two and one, but here we have a proof using Fourier series that works perfectly fine. Yeah, 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 yes. An example, we take our favorite. <laughs> FA is a, when you induce this map on the two torus, you denote it by FA. So we will prove that Lebesgue, FA is as good with respect to Lebesgue. So I um, uh, so you have seen already the proof for 2x mod 1 using Fourier series uh, last week. And here I will use a, a slightly different notation that makes life easier later for me. You can think of, 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 of it first for the 2x mod 1. For instance, if you're given f of x equals 2x mod 1, you can represent it in the complex plane by f of by considering that S1 is a subset of C, and you consider the map F of Z equals Z squared. If you write it in the coordinate on the circle, this just is equivalent to this guy. 
So z square is just doubling the angle, which is the doubling map. For the, for the 2, 1, 1 map, we can have similar by considering that T2. Wait, so yes, my parameterization goes to e to the 2 pi ix. Okay, so ah. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You have here a point on the unit circle, which is denoted by e to pi i x, and you just double the angle. This is e to the 4 pi i x. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so I think, yeah. Yes, this is z, this is z square. So I can do the same thing for the, for the, uh, for the 2 one, one map uh, by thinking this as a subset of C2, and the map that we will have will be f of z1 Z2 is Z1 square, Z2, and Z1, Z2. So here you can, again, see the same thing. If you use the, the change of coordinate of z1 being e to the 2 pi i x and z2 being e to the 2 pi i y, here you will see exactly what you have is e to the 2 pi i 2 x plus y, and here is e to the 2 pi i x plus y, which is exactly the 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 this map is giving x, y to 2 x, y, and x plus y. It's just a change of coordinates. And it will simplify the calculation that I will do later. So to prove ergodicity, we are going to prove that uh, invariant function under the dynamics are almost everywhere constant. So to do that, we pick an invariant function. I take it L2 says that P Composed with FA plus phi. So here we use the 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 series exp the Fourier expansion of phi. We can write it almost everywhere as phi of z1 z2 is at the Fourier constant. So if I look at the full expansion of C composed with FA, what do I get? This is exactly phi of Z1 square Z2, Z1, Z2. of z1 square z2 to the power n and z1 z2 to the power m. I need some more space here. So if I do some arrangement, I will have that. What I get is the sum of n m that square. I will stay. 
and I have Z1 to N plus M. And I have Z2 to N plus M. Yes. And here you can observe very well that this is exactly the, the two integers I have here. Observe that. A of nm is exactly 2n plus m. So this I can rewrite it as something I forgot to say that these coefficients they go to zero when the norm of this goes to zero, obviously. Here, C and M goes to zero for the convergence as, and this you can just think of it as yes. So here you can rewrite it as just C A. A minus one of Z one N Z two M. You just see that what you have here is just the, the pre image of the couple that you have here on the on the A. So and this should be equal by by the invariance by invariance. By the invariance of phi under the dynamics, I have that the Fourier sequence, uh, the Fourier coefficient should be the same. Yes. 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 I will have that C and M equals C A minus 1 and M. So similarly, you use the invariance. So similarly, using C compose F A square equals C compose F A, we have that C A minus 1 and M is C A minus 2 and M. So recursively, we have that now. C and M equals C A minus 1 and M equals because C A minus P and M and so on. So now here we have to okay I need some space. Observe that if if N and M are not zero So uh, using the, the, the definition, oops, oops, yes, thank you, yes, thank you. So here we have to observe that for n dif m different from 0, 0, From zero zero, you have that the, the two one one map will take any point to infinity. 
If you take any point to infinity, then A minus P and M will go to infinity. So this implies that using this property here, we will have that C and M equals zero. So we are left with C zero zero. So this proof that this proof that C is exactly C zero zero almost everywhere. C zero almost everywhere. Which proves the ergodicity. So there is a there is a generalization of this which we will do later as an exercise. Is it clear for everyone? So this is something we will do also later. So I should get my note before I write something. So you can prove that in general, if you have A, N by N, integer metric, is determinant of A being plus or minus one, and you consider the map FA from TN which is Rn modulo Zn self. So we can show that Fa is ergodic respect to Lebesgue, respect to volume, if and only if A has no eigenvalue, which is, if no eigenvalue, of A is a root of unity. This, using still uh, the same approach, the Fourier series, we will discuss this probably in the afternoon. So this is an example of, an, of a linear map that is ergodic. So I want also to show you an example of a map that is not ergodic. I mean, probably you know many examples, but for those who don't know. So you can consider this map F from the three torus, which is still at three mod Z3, which is given by F of X, Y, Z is equals to, you have two, one, one, applied to X, Y, and here you have just identity. not ergodic with respect to volume. So to see this, it's, it's, it's kind of simple. You can just think of the two torus being T3 being T2 times S1. So you have your two torus here and you times S1 when you do the identification of these two by just identity. So this is S1, you do the identification of these two torus by identity. You can see what is this map doing? If you take a point on this torus, let's say this, is, this has a coordinate T2 times zero. 
This map is just taking a point here, map it inside the torus. Because if you look at very well, if you put here zero, it just moves inside these two torus, which is the base here. So you can see this guy is invariant. If you want, you can now take something of which has positive volume, like if you take this set A, which is, which is given by D2 cross zero or half. You cut it here, you consider this set. This guy will be invariant because each of the torus is invariant. This guy will be invariant and the volume is half of the volume. It's not zero, neither one. And me of A is half. But you can do, okay, there's still time, yes. Ah, yes, 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 wow. Thank you, yeah, 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 yeah. That's very true. So, B, yeah. Sorry, guys. B is a, yeah. So A is a matrix where B are the measurable sets. So you can see really that, as I was telling you the picture, I was telling you at the beginning, this space, you can have many decomposition of the space into many meaningful dynamics in a major theoretic sense. Like, uh, you, you, you can have a decomposition for which both has positive measure. So, but you can do something else to make it ergodic, which is a little bit, it looks like a little bit like the Fustenberg example, but it will be ergodic by just adding here something that depends only on x. So that if you take the torus, you not map it to itself, you will just, you will just move it. You just move it in a different level. Every point will go to different level. So if you consider this map, f y, f of x, y, z, So here you can prove that F is ergodic. Back to the back. I think this is all I wanted to say for this lecture. <laughs>